nature not I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things and I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case open and shut no doubt about it I'm a nature nut today we'll go bird watching tomorrow we'll catch toads the next day we'll take photographs of bugs along the road I never get the feeling that I'm in a rut that's why I'm a nature nut well I'm a nature nut I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things and I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case open and shut no doubt about it I'm a nature nut How's it going? Did you know that over 99.999% of all the weird and nifty critters that have ever lived on the face of this planet are now extinct and that all we know about them we know from their fossils? It's a fact. A true fact of paleontology and today we're gonna go looking for fossils. It just so happens that we have behind me the badlands of dinosaur provincial park in alberta canada this is one of the best places for fossils in the entire world particularly dinosaur fossils but it's not quite the way you read about it in some books or seen on television where it's rugged people way out in the wild country living in tents and suffering immensely and going thirsty half the time and so on and so forth. The people who work here, they are indeed rugged people, but they go home to a comfortable bed and a nice shower every evening. You don't necessarily need a huge expedition. In fact, it was about 10 years ago, I remember a fellow uh, just a visitor to the park. He pulled up here to the public viewpoint, had a look out at the Badlands. He was impressed, as we all are. He walked down the hill. He found a little piece of fossil bone sticking out of the hill. He reported it. It turned out to be half a skeleton of a duck-billed dinosaur. Tens of thousands of other people had missed that fossil, and it was right there. So all you have to do is get to a good place for fossils in order to find fossils and know what you're looking for. This, by the way, is not the only place you can look for fossils, and that is not the only myth. Anyway, excuse me, I have to get back to my life and death struggle here. Life in the past, dramatic as anything. When parts of animals and plants are buried and partly replaced by minerals, they become fossils. Isn't this just a lovely roadside? The rocks around here are Paleocene in age. Just after the age of dinosaurs, and one summer, about 10 years ago, I spent the whole summer sitting here on this roadside with my buddy Andy, we were employed to look for fossils. And I'll tell you, it was one of the most boring summers of my entire life. All day, every day, we were picking around and finding these little clam shells and snail shells. And even though they're 50 some million years old, they became kind of monotonous. We were actually looking for other things. And I remember one day a farmer stopped to talk to us, and at that point we'd been working for two or three weeks without finding anything more exciting than a single little fish tooth about this big. Well, he asked us what we were doing, and we told him, and he thought we were living the life of adventure. That's how he pronounced it, adventure. He'd always wanted to live the life of adventure himself ever since he was a boy. His father returned from Argentina with ore samples, and oh, did they glitter. And so, he was a nice guy, so we didn't let him know that we were totally bored and this was nothing like adventure. Day after day, hour after hour, week after week, month after month, one snail fossil after another. Look, there's another one. Yet hope must spring eternal. If you want to find fossils, you have to have something more than a sense of adventure. You need patience and the ability to, you know, pretty well turn off your brain and look at snail fossils. 
<gasps> Anybody see a fish tooth? <laughs> yeah, right. How you doing, Spike? You know, dinosaurs have always been a bit of a Western thing. I figure that's just geology for you. Out here in the West, we got lots of rocks just the right age for dinosaurs. Back East, oh yeah, they got their trilobites, they got their primitive reptiles, but we got the dinosaurs. When the early fossil hunters were out looking for dinosaur bones, they had to hang out with cowboys. Started dressing like cowboys, talking like cowboys, even thinking like cowboys. That's something we like to keep alive even today. And I gotta tell you another thing. When there was dinosaurs around here, there were no badlands. This was a big, flat, swampy delta. And there were no people. Nobody to get up on top of one of these styracosaurus, ride them across the delta, pull on the horn, turn them one way, turn them the other. Would have been a lot of fun. <laughs> of course, it would have been rough if they stopped sudden. Real rough, in fact. Should have called them Hatrachosaurus, not Styracosaurus. It's the way I figure it. Fossils, snails, and clams are very common, and some are much older than the dinosaurs. Well, I've got to tell you about the best fossil I ever found myself. It was a warm, Spring evening, John Walper and I were out prospecting, and there in the ground, I saw a bone much like this one, half buried in the sandstone. Now, I was excited. I knew what it was. Walper knew what it was. But we couldn't excavate it because that's against the rules. So we phoned our friend Phil Curry, Canada's most celebrated dinosaur expert, and we told him that we had discovered the third skull cap of the dinosaur, Stenonicosaurus, in the history of paleontology. It's now called Troodon. Anyway, Phil, on the other end of the phone line, didn't believe us. And he said, ah, oh, don't worry, boys. It could be any number of things. I don't want you to be disappointed. Three weeks later, he came out to uh, have a look at it. Who was he ever surprised? He did the excavation, which took a little bit more work than that. This is, like I say, a a uh, reconstruction of the discovery. This is not the real bone, this is a cast. But have a look at this. It's small, but it's very, very rare and very significant. This is the brain case, the top of the brain case of Troodon. These are the tops of the eye sockets. It was a little carnivorous dinosaur. Stood about that high. And it was the smartest dinosaur of all, ever. Boat as smart as a chicken something I can be proud of. Most mammal fossils are just teeth, since teeth are the hardest part of a mammal's body. my friend John Wolper and we're out looking for fossils. You know, if you're going to find fossils, you need, what do you need? You need the right kind of rock, sedimentary rock, you yeah. laid down in water, usually made from sand or silt or mud or whatever at the time that the animals were alive, and you need it to be the right age, in this case, 75 million years. And after that, all you need is a good sharp eye and... Lots of patience. Lots of patience. Yeah. I was going to say Walper here. I just call him Walper because we're both called John. He calls me Acorn. Walper's got one of the best sharp fossil finding eyes I've ever encountered. So let's go give you a demonstration of that. Okay. Okay. This was a big duck-billed dinosaur. That's huge. Now this is not 
difficult fossils to find. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's bottom at a distance. So, yeah. so big tibia here, mm -hmm. shin bone, probably about a meter or maybe just a bit more, which is a nice big adult duckbill dinosaur. Mm -hmm. A few other limb bones, that's part of the, the funny bone, the humerus. Yeah, <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Uh, so this is probably not one animal. This is no. mixed up bones. Yeah, part of a bone bed. Yeah. Um, mostly duckbill dinosaurs. Um, a few other odds and ends mixed in with them. This is probably a vertebrae right here. This curved part from a horned dinosaur, but mostly duckbill dinosaurs in this deposit. Now this is a pretty easy bone to spot. I was going to uh, going to mention that some of it has that orange lichen on it, and that's yeah, that's an easy way to spot it at a distance. Eh? Yeah, any bone that's been on the surface for a while, oftentimes will have an orange or yellow lichen on it. Yeah. Well, why, why don't we uh, spread out a bit and look for uh, look for some small stuff, some okay. challenging fossils. Sure. See what we can find. Hadrosaur tooth. Garfish scale. By gar. Hadrosaur tooth, so I had to go to the dentist. A bit of turtle shell. More turtle shell. What time? of the earth unfurled Won't you feel the timeless hills Oh, they're barren and severe Here we go We're back again In the badlands along the old red deer There's both left to tell Oh, there's a prehistoric shell Takes us back Following the sound of the Badland Bell Won't you feel the timeless hills Oh, the barren and severe back again in the badlands along the old red deer there's toes teeth and skulls stuck inside the badland hills Them a fragment of the fossil finders through. Won't you feel the timeless hills? Oh, the barren and severe. Here we go, we're back again in the badlands along the old red deer. Oh, here we go. We're back again in the badlands along the old red deer. You know, 
dinosaur museums are wonderful places and they are of course the best places to see entire dinosaur skeletons and to build your enthusiasm for dinosaurs and for fossils in general. But you can also use dinosaur museums as a way of identifying your fossils. Let's say we just found these two mystery bones out in the Badlands. You take your bone or a photograph or a drawing even and compare it to the skeletons in front of you. See if you can find anything that matches. And you know, I never get tired of this display of a big duck-billed dinosaur being attacked by these snippy little dromaeosaurus. Well, let's just see if we can match either of these bones up to anything in the display in front of us. Take your time. I don't think so. I don't think they're going to match anything here. You know, I'll bet this piece here is going to match part of old Chasmosaurus behind me. Chasmosaurus was a horned dinosaur, a ceratopsian, and I'll let you in on a little secret. This sort of pitted rugose texture, that's typical of horned dinosaur bones. Now, any idea what sort of bone we've got here? It's not quite the right shape for an eye horn. Or a nose horn. It's too wide for the top of the beak, the bill. But it's just perfect down there. That's what it is. The predentary bone at the tip of the lower jaw of some kind of a horned dinosaur. Now all we have to do is identify this other one. Now there are a lot of bones in your average dinosaur skeleton, a couple of hundred in fact. This is Albertosaurus, a big meat eater. You probably recognize the teeth and you might recognize these deep pits, smooth texture. This bone would fit right there. There you go, it's a broken toe bone from the back foot of an Albertosaurus, or perhaps a close relative, Daspletosaurus. Hey, who knows, it's only a toe bone. I should mention though, before you start bringing all your fossils down to the museum, museum people, they're always happy to meet amateur fossil enthusiasts, and they're always happy to see fossils that were legitimately collected with good data about where they came from, but they're never happy to see fossils that should have been left in the ground. If you have any doubt, take a picture, make a drawing, bring that to the museum, Tell them where you uh, took it or made it. What killed the last dinosaurs? Most scientists say it was an asteroid from space, but no one is yet quite sure. Hey, Corn, you have something there? I do indeed. I've got a uh, mammal tooth fossil. Oh, 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 look at look that. Isn't that nice one? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's lovely. I mean, that's about as big a mammal tooth as you could find. Yeah. From this. Well, that's something to chew on, huh? It is indeed. What do you figure? Well, there's a couple of possibilities. Oh, man, you got it. I think, <laughs> I think that's exactly right. I think that's uh, an extinct possum, uh, Eodelphus, maybe, mm -hmm. which was um, basically a possum. One of the few groups of mammals that hasn't changed much since uh, hmm. since the uh, Campanian time, 75 million years ago. This is a big one. It is, yeah, probably what, with teeth of that big, about a skull, about like that? Yeah. And body... House cat size? Even possum size. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, you betcha. No, that's a beautiful fossil. Yeah, it's Well, pretty. one tooth is quite worn down, but the other one has all of the, uh, all of the little cusps and bumps oh, yeah. and ridges that it would have when it was alive. Oh yeah, that's great. So not bad. Now I know this won't surprise you, but it does surprise a lot of people to know that all the mammals that uh, that lived during that time, along with the dinosaurs, and we're you know we're interested in them because we're mammals ourselves, of course. Gotcha. Were little things, you know, the size of mice and squirrels and things like that. Yeah. Although there were no mice and squirrels at yeah. the time. But also that the first mammals evolved at the same time as the first dinosaurs, yeah. and by the time this critter lived, mammals had already completed two thirds of their time on Earth. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Oh yeah, dinosaurs are just on top for that long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite the thing. Food for thought, isn't it? Oh yeah. The whole tooth, nothing but the tooth. 
I'm glad we were able to uh, jaw about it today. You betcha. See that? Toothy grin. Glad to have found it. Pretty good. Ha <laughs> ha, it might be. Remember Montana? I remember Montana. Remember uh, those little tiny duckbill dinosaur bones we saw? Ones. Yeah. I think that this is a um, dorsal vertebrae. I'll let you take a look at it, but I think oh. that it's mid back baby or nestling mm -hmm. duckbill dinosaur. It's a vertebra, for sure. Mm -hmm. And it couldn't be. It couldn't be a turtle. It couldn't be a lizard or a snake no. or a bird, pterosaur. Yeah. Um, no, it's same you, same size or shape as the adults, just a little bit small, well, a lot smaller, but same proportions. And so, the ends are worn off. Yeah, they're not as not as uh, well calcified in the babies, of course, because they're still growing. So the bones have to increase in size. They're just not as sturdy yet. Now everybody loves a baby dinosaur. Isn't it cute? Yeah. <laughs> That's. Do you think yeah. we should get a second opinion? Uh, Somebody like Phil Curry might be Phil interested Curry's, in this. I'm, yeah, I'd be real interested to know what Phil Curry thinks of. Okay. Good stuff. Excellent. Well, you know what I think we should do? I think we should come back when it's a bit warmer, <laughs> like maybe next May or something. May would be good, or June. It's That's a deal. Okay, let's right. do that. Set a date. Right on. Yeah, I'd like to hear what, uh, what the professionals think. I'm <laughs> jealous of that. Dr. Philip Curry later told me that other baby dinosaur bones have come from this spot, so I guess we were right. Well, you know, I guess that's about all the time we've got for fossils right now. But I have to leave you with one more thought. At some point in your fossil hunting adventures, the raw impact of it all is going to hit you. You're going to realize that whatever you found, it used to be part of a real animal. This tooth used to rip through real flesh. And then the animal died. It was buried underground, not just for a little while, but for a long while. Tens of millions of years. Up above, the sun was rising and setting. The days were going by. Other critters were going about their business. And then. Not long ago, it was exposed to the sun again. You were the first person to find it. And not only were you the first person to find it, but we are the first people in all of history to know what the heck it is and where it came from. <laughs> that's profound stuff. Very interesting. Profound moments like that, that's why I'm a nature nut. And I hope you are too. See you again soon. Bye now. Same time each and every week, uncensored and uncut. No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut.